So when I first started making this particular video, I thought it was just gonna be about sawing some pretty cool Polonia logs. We have a pretty good stack of them. And before long, all that changed because there was enough of these logs that I wanted to enlist the help of my wife, Martha, who normally spends all the time over there in the building, doing all the straight lining and the secondary processing while I do the sawing. But in this case, I needed some help. So it went from me just sawing up a bunch of logs to sawing with a second person, an experienced second person. Maybe there's some tips and tricks that we do when we're sawing as a pair that possibly you could be doing when you have help employees or even if you're sawing with your wife. One thing you'll notice that I'm wearing my customary summertime uniform. It's hot out here, I like the heat but it's been up in the high 90s, low 100s, kind of warm. And I don't know about you, but I've tried every kind of these fancy schmancy shirts they have that are supposed to keep you cool when you're working and all this high technology. As far as I'm concerned, they're all garbage. Especially the ones that say, they're designed to make you sweat before they'll cool you down. Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I've tried them, and they do, they make you sweat. And by the time I start sweating, I'm taking them off. To me, that's a lot like uh, getting into a hot car. The manufacturer says, hey, our air conditioner is going to blast you with heat so you'll sweat before the air conditioner comes on. To me, that's just stupid. Anyway, there's really nothing more comfortable for me than a good old-fashioned T-shirt, I'm wearing white today, sometimes it's red, so it doesn't really matter the color. I am in my summer uniform. So whenever you see me wearing the white t-shirt, yeah, it's hot. get some more chip another load today we're gonna to be sawing up some polonia logs we have about 53 I believe give or take shouldn't take too long but it's pretty cool wood when I got a decent amount of logs to saw in a day or so I enlist my wife's help Martha so I'm going to show you some of the tricks that we do when we're sawing with a two-person crew. I normally saw alone, but with two people, you can really get your production up. Notice how Martha stays out of the way of the head when I'm sawing. She's always behind me or off to my side. She's not in any danger zone. You always have to worry about the blade coming out sideways. It's important to stay out of that dangerous area. One thing you'll also notice is the debarker going in and cutting a clean line down the side of the log. That's something I'm always looking for, which is to make sure that the blade is running into the groove that was just cut. One thing you'll notice when I'm cutting is that very distinctive ring from the band. When you hear that, you're cutting at the optimum speed. That speed will change based on the thickness of the cant, the size of the log, the hardness of the wood, but you'll see that I'm trying to always get to that tone. Here's another good example of how Martha helps by loading another log onto the loader arms. You'll also notice that she's staying out of that danger area. And as a matter of fact, right there, I was bringing the head back. She was slightly out of position. I stopped the head, she moved around, got out of the way, and I continued back. I'm cutting a lot of these in a two inch thick or eight quarter boards. Once I've got the cant form, there's no reason for me to continue to rotate as long as the boards aren't showing stress and I'm centering the pith. So once I get it like this, I'm just gonna mow through it. 
Here's the good old drag back that I invented, uh, pushing these previous boards down into position. They don't look heavy, they are. So anytime you can use the sawmill to help you out, that's a very good thing. So I'm even gonna use the uh, drag back shelf to pull the slab I just cut off as well as position the lumber that I had just sawn correctly on the stacking table. Martha knows what the next step is gonna be. See again here, she was getting a little bit too far forward so you can see her backing up. That means she's very aware of what's going on. That's what we're looking for. She's gotta be safe, I gotta be safe. I mean, after all, it's just a hunk of wood. There's no reason to get hurt over a hunk of wood. Here you can see that that stack of boards is still not being stickered. Really makes no difference. We don't have to rush into it. She knows that the next step is to get a log on the loader arms. That's what's gonna slow me down next. So she knows to get that on there and this other wood can be stacked at any given time. Main thing is to keep the mill sawing. It's all about teamwork. Right here I can see that this first board didn't get moved. It's kind of heavy. So I'm gonna go around, grab one end, she's gonna grab the other. We're gonna put it down on the stickers without disturbing them. That's all I needed to do. That helps her out. She can do the other ones by herself. I cannot stress how important it is to put that shelf on the drag back. It's something that Woodmiser does not supply with their systems. I've done a video on it. You can see how I can hold boards up. I can drop them anywhere I want to on the stacking table. It really is a huge benefit. If you don't have them on your sawmill, you are suffering. Let's load another log on there. We're slowly chewing through them. No reason to stop. Just keep putting them on and cutting them up. Here's a miss. The slab I was dragging back did not drop as far as I wanted it to, so it actually landed on the stack of wood. I do use that sometimes but I did not want that to happen this time. So I was able to stop and Martha cleared it for me and we're back up and saw on in no time. As a matter of fact, right here, you'll see is one of the few times we had to talk to each other. She recognized that this slab was gonna to be too narrow and too hard for me to pull back without slowing things down. So she looked at me, asked what to do. I nodded to her. She hand picked it. I didn't drag it back and we're back up and saw on. As you watch this video, you'll see that we do use hand signals a lot. We nod at each other a lot, but we're not doing a lot of talking. You really can't hear each other over the machine. So communication is important, but talking is not required. This one drops like it's supposed to, and everything is good again. Watch this sequence. It's time to put another log on the loader arms. I've got the head out of the way. Martha has the log hook in her hands, but she will not move till the head is all the way down on the other side of the track. Right now I'm holding the head back, I'm waiting for her to clear out. When she gets to her safe position, then I'll return the head. Stuff like that makes a big difference in sawing safely and you can see how we do it very easily. Important to keep the pith or the center of the log centered in one of the boards. You can see on that last sequence where the black dot of the center board is contained in one full board. Typically you don't want to split the pith or have the center of the log trapped in two boards because it causes them to bow. It's much better to have the center of the pith 
in one board. We've hit an ant nest. I mean, ants are just part of sawing. The easiest thing to do is take that board, put it on the track, let's get it out of the way. Those dead gum things will bite you. Nothing else, they're a total pain. You can spend all day spraying and playing with them, but the main thing is, is get it out of the way. I'll spread that out when I dump those slabs, and then I'll pull that board out and make sure there's none back in there, and then I'll bring it back. I don't like ants around the sawmill, the little devils will get in the sawdust, they'll stay there, you can't hardly kill them. Best thing is just evict them and deal with them later. I do not use pesticides on our wood. I really don't like doing that. The customers don't like us to do that. So when you get in an ant or an insect situation, you want to do everything physical to remove them. But really the last thing you want to do is to spray a chemical on the wood. After that, or if you do that, then you have to explain to the customers what you sprayed, why you sprayed it. You have to give them a safety data sheet. You may be liable for insurance claims later on. So best thing is don't spray your lumber if you're gonna sell it. Come up with a better technique to get rid of the critters. Oh, this log's fighting Martha a little bit. She had to double clutch it. You can see how I hold the head back to wait for her to get out of the way. As you're watching this, you might notice several things. The roller table that she's putting that slab on is at a hard downward angle. So it's called a gravity roller for a reason. And you'll also notice that those cross ties that we're using to stage logs on before they get to the loader arms is also at a downward slant. So the logs want to roll down to the mill and the loader arm. Boy, I love that sound of that blade in that wood. Doesn't that sound pretty? This thing's fighting us the whole way. Now the end doesn't want to feed cleanly into the other board. So I'm using my hip to try to straighten it out, to get the old B train rolling. Uh, some boards just are a pain. Some logs are a pain. This one's a pain. Uh, thing is, we own a sawmill, it's a log, we're going to win in the end. Uh-oh, Martha must have spotted something I didn't. Typically when she brings out the can of Raid, it means she's seen some wasps flying around. That tells me she's seen something, she puts it in front of me, she doesn't have to tell me what it's for. Now I know where it is. I put it on the ground next to me. If the little guys start coming at me, I'm going to hammer them. I hope one of the most important things you folks get out of this is that if you got two people and a good sawmill and you have good communication, which doesn't necessarily mean talking, just good communication, you can go through quite a few logs pretty quick. You're not having to work too hard. You're at a good steady pace. The mill's cutting wood. Boards are being stacked. Waste is being removed. It's just another day at the office. Here's this pack of finished lumber. All eight quarter, uh, basically not free. Some really nice boards. If you like what you've seen on this video, please hit the subscribe button. It's down at the bottom of your screen. Please hit the like button. I would appreciate it and y'all have a good day.